So first, let's talk about nuclear propulsion. So out yeah. there, interesting propulsion ideas. Uh, so what do you think, beyond uh, the, uh, the chemical engines that we talked about, what do you think about using nuclear fission and maybe even nuclear fusion <laughs> for, uh, for propulsion? We already have thermal nuclear reactors. Uh, there are nuclear engines that have been tested both by the United States and Soviet Union that were 100% valid like totally ready to go, efficient, super awesome. Um, yes, yes, yes. Hardcore yes. Um, and what, what they're using is, yeah, uh, basically a fusion reactor. You're flowing hydrogen through it and heating up the hydrogen, taking it from liquid to a gas, you know, and by heating it up, you're, you're adding energy to the propellant. And then you're literally just using that now steam hot hydrogen and flowing it through a D-Lavelle nozzle. And you also have to use that, that energy to spin the pumps to still pump the thing. So you're still kind of using like a lot of the tricks that you're using, but instead of a chemical reaction, you're literally just using nuclear fission mm -hmm. to heat up propellant and do the same thing. And at the end of the day, you end up with like eight to 900 seconds of specific impulse, which is double that of chemical propulsion. Most of that comes from just because hydrogen is so light, you're only emitting, you're only ejecting hydrogen out of the nozzle. Mm -hmm. So the lighter molecule is, the p faster it, you know, just like if you had a, a you know, it's a golf ball versus like a, a bowling ball. You can only physically throw one so fast and the other one as a human, you're not going to do very well with. So you can just, you get, you have the more potential for a higher exit velocity. So nuclear thermal, amazing. You can just shoot these little hydrogen molecules out crazy fast, crazy efficiently. We already have it. Like we can do it. Yes, yes, yes. And actually we're already re uh, investing in that again as the United States is, is looking into, uh, basically ramping back up our nuclear propulsion. Why haven't we done it yet? And uh, what do you think the challenges are there? And do you think that's an obvious future? Like, would you, would you see in 50 years, we're not using, um, like we're not, for major projects, like a Starship type of project, we're not using chemical propulsion anymore? For getting off Earth, you'll always want to use chemical propulsion because the the gas will become irradiated. <laughs> like you don't want to, you don't want to. And and actually, the thrust to weight ratio of these engines are relatively poor. They're they're very heavy. They have a nuclear reactor. Like they're not. They're really the reason we kind of give up on them is they're really most useful for like interplanetary. If you're trying to get a big like if you're trying to send a huge payload off to Mars, nuclear thermal is amazing. It's still could be beneficial even going to the moon, you know, like in an earth moon system, you could use th nuclear thermal uh, very effectively and it could be a, a great choice, but it also, th that starts to get into that trade of like, eh, we can just kind of use a little bit bigger rocket and, and fly sure. a, a normal, yeah. you know, it's, it's that whole trade thing. It, but uh, th another reason why we, we kind of stopped using them, the, the one that the United States developed, Nerva was so heavy, only a Saturn V could actually lift <laughs> The stage of it, yeah. like the, the upper stage. So it replaced the S4B with a, a nuclear thermal with the Nerva engine. Um, the Soviet Union developed one about one tenth the size and and thrust that was small enough to fly on, pro, on a proton rocket. Um, but neither of them ever flew. Both of them have been tested and like thumbs up, ready to go, which is just a huge shame to me because they they could unlock a lot of interplanetary potential and yeah, just all around yeah, awesome. Which potentially interstellar as well. Not quite, I don't think nuclear thermal, not, we're not quite getting there, but then you get into like nuclear pulse drives and things where you're literally like basically ejecting a bomb out the back of your yeah. rocket yes. and exploding and having like a shock absorber and, and pogo sticking your way out of the solar system. That, that's, I mean, by all physics, sure. You know, there's not nothing wrong with that. It's not breaking any laws of physics and, you know, I, but I just don't see us getting to that need anytime soon. I don't think we're going to be. travel. Yeah, I don't. I mean, that's that's. I, I think we're gonna want a better understanding of physics and physics itself. Yeah, I, I, do you have a hope that maybe theoretical physics will open the door to some exciting propulsion systems? Yeah, I do. I think we're still at the very infancy of our understanding of everything and how things work. And you know, a hundred years ago, it would be stupid to try to predict the things we know today. And who knows? Like even you know, I think about things like James Webb looking deeper into our solar system than ever before and physically being able to see objects that we just have not even been able to physically see before. Oh, and being what? able to study black holes, for example, uh, better and better the stuff that's happening outside of black holes, at the edges of black holes, how the information is stored, 
uh, the hundred uh, percent holographic principles. Just there's so much weirdness <laughs> around, around black holes. Yes, so around where g gravity starts bending light, it's like all right. <laughs> we get to look at that now and start to wonder like what is going on and how, how can we like use that somehow exactly. for propulsion i mean it seems like awfully crazy and futuristic at this moment but i think that's because we know almost nothing about um uh, you know that those kinds of objects where again where the general relativity and quantum mechanics start to start to um have to be both considered to describe those kinds of objects. And as we study those objects, we might figure out some kind of unification thing that will allow us to uh, understand maybe how to use black holes to for propulsion. Like, yeah. to, uh, I, mean, I, I, I can say I, a lot be, of crazy things, but like basically. Would, but the, the point is it'd be stupid for us to even guess about things we don't even know about yet. You know what I mean? Like, and so uh, therefore I'm not going to say that the best option for interstellar travel is nuclear drives like that could be like someone saying you know in 1600 the only way to fly is by strapping a thousand birds to your head you know yeah. like but uh, that said i mean everything you're saying is right but human history is such like at the beginning of the 20th century physicists rutherford they, everybody there's there's brilliant people that said we've basically solved all of it right if you talk to most physicists i think they're going to say like we've pretty much solved like the standard model describes physics extremely accurately right uh general relativity explains the cosmos as we observe them extremely accurately yeah there's a whole dark matter dark energy thing Ooh, whatever yeah but uh outside of that we so like the, we basically solved like like where are you go going to find gaps in knowledge that are going to somehow create warp drives or something like that right. so wormholes uh but uh, that's, it seems like throughout history, we prove ourselves wrong 100%. time and time again. And yes. No, I, and I, this is well outside of any of my knowledge base. So I want to make sure that if I say anything stupid, it's because I'm <laughs> a, just a, a peasant here in, in physics land. But yes, um, <laughs> we're but all yeah, peasants I, in physics <laughs> land. <laughs> but I, I really just think like, it's very humbling that we're still using chemical propulsion and, and variant cell, like injecting mass to, to propel ourselves. And I, I no matter how you get at it. And I think someday I, I, I would expect that our species has figured out a way to, to get beyond that.